everyone, Christina here, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own custom maps using your own tech laser in the Google Maps platform. So let's get started. Now you might be wondering why you'd be using a map and, and how you could be using one. Maps can incorporate a very personalized experience for some people. You can make custom engagement, wedding, and anniversary gifts. And in this video, we're actually going to be making this little ornament, which is using a custom map. In part one, we are actually going to be going over the digital aspect of creating a map and creating a laser-ready file. First off, we're going to want to go to the following website address. The website is actually console.cloud.google.com. You can see it right up here. And we're going to want to go to map styles. As you can see, I already have a couple here, but what we're going to want to do is click create style. Now there are some options here that have pre-made maps. We have our night, dark, gray, light, atlas, and classic. For this video tutorial, the only one we're going to really be using is the gray one. This is the map that we are going to be editing. So once we have this selected, what we're going to do is we're going to go click save. We can give it a title. I'm just going to go with a generic title for this purpose. Awesome. And as we can see, here's our map. Now up at the top, we're going to want to click customize style. And here we have a whole bunch of options. As you can see here, we actually have some blue dots. And the blue dots mean that there are already some default settings that are in place. We can see that on this particular option, we have our fill and our stroke. And it's already defaulted to a blue color. Although we don't really see blue on the map. So I think that's just the default that Google has. And then you also have the option if you want the text to show up for, you know, the different cities and roads and such. Now for these purposes, because I want a very plain map, I'm going to be disabling all of the text and converting all of the colors to just solid black and white to make it easy for our laser to see. So I'm just going to be going through all of these options, clicking on and off, testing out different things as we can see to the right where the map is. It's going to change as we're doing our adjustments. So it's like a live preview mode, I guess you can say. I will say that the three largest things that I like to edit would be the roads and the highway, as well as the water. In this tutorial, all of that I'm going to be changing black to make it easy. And another thing that you might want to try is if you enable a stroke on some of the smaller roads that are really thin, if you're planning on cutting this, the thicker the lines, the better. You know, just play around with it, have some fun, see what style suits you best. You can enable and disable whatever you like. Now, sometimes I do actually enable the gray option for certain features just because I often use the same map when I'm printing things on my printer and making like little decor pieces. The one awesome part about this is if you bring it into Lightburn or even Illustrator and you live trace it, the gray goes away. And once we have the location that we want, you can zoom in and out, whatever you choose. I screenshot it, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be importing that into Lightburn. When it's imported, as you can see, it's just a graphic. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here, and we are going to go to Trace Options. And this will actually allow us to select the area that we would like to vectorize, I guess you could say. Once we have it, we're going to click OK. And, you know, I don't want a lot of this jumble in the background, so I'm actually going to click onto it and drag it off. So all we have is the actual line art for our laser. And you can size this accordingly as you see fit. We do always want to make sure that this is set to fill if we're planning on engraving it and line if you're planning on cutting. 
Make sure if you wanna cut this on your laser that you actually bump up the stroke on some of these roads because the thicker the stroke, the better it is to cut. So you would just have to go back into your map and adjust that. Then I'm gonna come down here and select the material and the size wood that I'm gonna be using. Now the next part can be a little confusing depending on what option you wanna take. That would be to set up the circle. I mean, in this particular file, this is going to be an ornament. And we do wanna make sure that the circle is sized correctly and we have it set to line because we want this to cut. If you are designing in light burn, you're going to want to actually create another circle then I like to select it and I like to just center it so I know it's in the correct area. And I'm gonna weld it or merge it all together. I'm going to create another circle for where it would be cut out. Center it again. Awesome. Now, there is another way to do this. If you are not comfortable designing in Lightburn, you can actually design in Illustrator, which is my preferred program of use. So I will be showing you that for some advanced shapes. And we are also gonna wanna create another circle, which is going to be the back layer. This is where the map will be. And it is okay if your map is a little larger than the area, this is actually preferred. So in Illustrator, I'm gonna be kind of following a similar process. I'm going to be creating my circles. I'm gonna be creating another circle on top and resizing it. And I'm actually using the eraser tool to make a custom shape. And I also prefer to work in Illustrator when I'm doing text and stuff. So you can actually see here, I can layer it, I can adjust the font, I can connect the letters by adding strokes, and I can position it in a visual way for me to reciprocate when I go to light burn. And then when we want to bring our Illustrator document over, all we're gonna do is we're going to save it, and then in light burn, we're going to actually import it. And the awesome part about this is it will import right into your file. Now, there is something kind of wonky that light burn does with text. As you can see here, there are some portions that are darker, and for some reason, it adds an extra layer where these cutouts should be. So. I usually go through and I remove them. This can be especially problematic if you're trying to do an engrave. Awesome, this looks pretty good. And because I do like to try and keep all my text one piece when I cut, I am going to position this in a way so I can just merge it. When it comes to cutting, as you can see, there are some areas of this that are very, very thin. We like to try and avoid that just because your text can break and we don't want that. Now for these like little pieces in between that are very close and create thin areas, I'm gonna actually go in and resize them to give more bulk to the other side. Another option that you could do is you can actually create an offset and that will help bump up your stroke a little bit. I think we're at the point now that we can actually send the files to our laser. For the bottom layer, this is actually going to be on a masked white sheet, and I will show you what I do when I'm setting this up. And for the top layer, it'll actually be a separate piece of wood. And this actually concludes my part one of the tutorial.